Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Peter Kern. I'm the co-host of our Space Art Summer School with the Museum of Cosmonautics. Uh, I'm not in Moscow at the moment. I'm in Berlin, but through the power of the internet, we're coming together for a series of public talks uh, as if we were all together with you in Moscow. And I have the pleasure this evening for our second talk in our public program of introducing Marco Trovatello, who's Communication Program Officer for Space Exploration at the European Space Agency. Uh, Marco is somebody I've gotten to work with for uh, some years uh, and uh, also can consider a friend and uh, inspiration and in, in understanding how communications and culture and space exploration all come together, even in the, uh, even in the context of uh, the European Space Agency. So Marco, we're so pleased to have you with us, at least virtually. Uh, across across space from uh, Cologne, the other uh, a little further into Germany, and uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, and thanks for the very nice words, uh, Peter. And hello, everybody. So, um, would you like me to start, Peter? Yeah, go for it. Actually, I should say before you begin, if people who have questions, I will be monitoring the YouTube channel. So, if you if you ask a question there. Um, we'll, we'll stop and have some discussion at the end. Uh, anything that's unclear, anything you'd like to know, uh, we're happy to ask Marco. All right, uh, thank you for joining me in my talk or lecture or however you may call it um, with the title ESA and the Arts. Um, and uh, you can read the subtitle actually. Uh, it is, um, so my project for tonight is uh, to share with you all these wonderful resources which can be useful for you as young and aspiring artists um, with uh, yeah, the Euro space, European Space Agency's platforms. Uh, and um, it will not be limited to imagery and sounds and videos, but it will uh, go uh, one actually large step, step further to uh, data because data is what becomes imagery and what becomes sounds and what become videos and possibly artistic work. Before that, um, actually, I, uh, I feel sorry, but I have to bore you with a couple of facts uh, should you not know the European Space Agency. Um, the European Space Agency is uh, what we call an IGO, an intergovernmental organization. Uh, this is because it's not one, uh, but it's 22 governments joining for, to, or joined actually in building one space, space agency, which meanwhile has uh, 22 member states, um, around about 5,000 employees. And what I am personally quite proud of is uh, that ESA stands for exclusively peaceful purposes. So we do not know, we don't engage in military use uh, of space. Um, we are solely, solely after the um, science, technology and exploration uh, and the, the possible future use of space for for peaceful purposes. Um, the headquarters, which I happened to work uh, um, at um, is in Paris. And it's a, one of the smaller establishments with a couple hundred people there. And I was uh, responsible for uh, what I used to call strategic communications. So basically a lot of what I will be referring to in uh, this uh, talk has to do with my past job, but of course it's also still part of my um, current job, which is uh, I take care of basically all the communication for human space exploration and a bit of what we call robotic space exploration of space as well. And I will come to that in, uh, in a bit. Uh, um, actually, I'm not so sure about Roscosmos's budget, but I believe it's much higher than ours. Uh, NASA's is, uh, it is, uh, it is three to four times larger than ours. So in, in principle, what the Europeans uh, spend uh, on space uh, per year is, is around about five to six um, um, uh, billion uh, per year. And that equals uh, 12 euros, so a cinema ticket per, per European per year. And that is uh, quite a few, I consider. So what ESA do, uh, uh, what, what does ESA do? Uh, ESA is basically active in every area of the space sector. So uh, we do not just do uh, uh, human exploration or uh, robotic or scientific exploration of space, but we also have uh, the launches, we have telecoms, we have earth observation um, and a lot of other fields. And meanwhile, ESA has flown over 80 satellites and missions and that is exclusively robotic, robotic stuff. It doesn't count the human exploration missions. And of course the spaceport in Kourou. Um, so um, 
now we get a bit closer to, to Russia. What you can see here is that we have an office uh, in uh, Moscow is my colleague Rene Pischel, uh, who takes care of this very important job for us because we have a very, very strong link with, with Roscosmos. Uh, and that uh, not just, uh, forgive the dog barking, uh, I will, uh, <laughs> I have to close the window. So, um, but uh, as you will see la later also, um, uh, we have a very important mission that we do with our Russian colleagues uh, to Mars, uh, which is one part is already there. The other one, uh, Rover is supposed to fly in 2022. So, um, just to get an idea, we have many international partners of which Roscosmos and NASA, uh, but also JAXA and the Canadian Space Agency are the most important ones. Just two more uh, boring uh, minutes because before we come to the actual fascinating uh, stuff, um, WIPO uh, is the UN's uh, World Intellectual Property Organization and they, they actually uh, opened the door also to artistic reuse of a, a lot of our materials. Russia is a member of WIPO, uh, many, many European states. Uh, actually, I, they have more than 100 member states, so significantly larger than, than ESA. They enabled a lot of the artistic reuse, which I will showcase to you uh, in these remaining, I don't know, maybe 50 uh, minutes. And I hope we have some room for, for questions um, um, as well. Um, so finally, with the help of WIPO, ESA came up uh, with um, uh, in particular with regards to uh, widest possible reuse uh, while still being legally compliant with an IGO and allowing remixes, sharing, commercial reuse. As you can see here, we ended up with um, uh, an, a license which is called the Crea Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike License. And again, some details will follow up later. Uh, the only thing you have actually to do is when you use our stuff is uh, you have to quote uh, ESA and possible partners who, uh, who are co-owners of, of the content. Um, basically, you have to credit us and that is and, and mention the name of this, this actually quite cryptic name of the license, which is CC by SA 3.0 IGO. There's one issue with that license and I would like to share that issue with you. It is a so-called copyleft license. So copyleft means it, all, it, it automatically transfers the same license to every reused work. So for some, should you for some reasons um, not be able to use it in a share-like way. So that means actually you make an artistic work with our stuff um, and, and then uh, you don't want to put it under the same license, you have to get in contact. This happens uh, quite often. So if you read that last uh, sentence here, it happens quite often and usually it is never a problem. And I will send you, I will, I will show you a couple of um, uh, examples. The organization uh, uh, itself is not so important, but you can check actually, I uh, will be happy to share this full presentation with you. So the full PowerPoint uh, 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 file with all the links to the resources, because actually you would end up well, noting down or yachting down a lot of stuff and uh, that will actually maybe distract you from, from the actual le lecture. So, so, so drop that uh, uh, pen or pencil or, or whatever. Just watch and then listen if you don't mind and you will get the this presentation with all the content. So um, again, this was uh, um, an introduction to our open access strategy. I was very happy for the uh, director general to strongly support that. He has a university professor uh, past and maybe future because he will leave us uh, in uh, uh, a not so uh, uh, long uh, while. It was very helpful and you can read some, actually you can read them later, you can, you can read some uh, uh, of uh, the whys, um, uh, uh, so why we did it and uh, why we think it was important. Now actually to uh, what I uh, would not just call an exciting mission, but a mission which truly sparked a lot of artistic endeavors which, uh, and uh, artists actually which engaged, engaged with, uh, with ESA. Um, you can see here an animation, actually it's a, it's a GIF, as you can clearly see, of uh, Rosetta's uh, Comet 67P. Uh, uh, and you see that it is uh, um, published under said uh, license. Um, this um, spooky, dark, um, outer world thing, actually, which, which, which resembles, and if you know the mission, you, you may know that it has been referred to uh, a lot, um, 
um, as, a, as a rubber duck, uh, because it's a very special kind of comet, has really sparked um, uh, uh, artistic use. And here's one first uh, resource I would like to show you. And actually, I'm not quite sure, Peter, maybe you can help me. Uh, you know, it's pause and I have to share it again. Um, so you can actually, it's also a good test case uh, for me to see um, if... Um, I, I, yeah, I believe it will work. We just have to give it a, a moment's pause. Uh, doing presentations on Zoom is not the same as doing them in, in real life. Yes, correct. Um, um, you share. And there we go. So basically, yeah, perfect. yeah looking good. Um, and you see uh, that it took until 2018 that the, the, the full image archive uh, was, was complete. Um, and again, this is fully reusable. Um, you see that the whole set of the super high-res imager on, on, that, um, uh, on that camera, including the data, was put under set, set license. So you can fully dive in and explore this archive and, and reuse. Uh, the contents. Um, again, I have to switch to the PowerPoint presentation um, for, for the next link. Um, and again, you see that here is again uh, one resource which can be freely exploited, which is a 3D model. So you can do your own 3D prints, you can alter them, you can transform the comet, you can color it, you can put it into pieces, you can uh, actually, we have, I will come uh, a bit later to an artist which uh, uh, is active in what she calls ex ex explosive art. Um, you can basically explode it, you can basically do with it, with it what, what, you, uh, what you want. Um, and the, this is just one of the many resources uh, that would be possible with the, um, uh, with the Rosetta imagery and uh, data. Um, um, so um, again, sorry for the for the mess. It's a bit um, it's a bit tricky to uh, to jump uh, between uh, PowerPoint and um, Safari in that moment. Um, Again, as I mentioned, uh, the Rosetta mission really sparked space arts. And here are some um, examples, actually, because it is, um, it's a bit unforeseen that uh, uh, this um, changing in between the, the apps is a, is a bit cumbersome. But um, you can also see my image, right? So, I mean, actually, one, one link I can try to avoid to use basically this here. Is an email is an, is an uh, vinyl LP actually uh, by uh, a, a Belgian uh, independent duo at the time. Now they are a full a band, Hydrogen C, um, and they re reused uh, the Singing Comet, um, which is something if you haven't heard it, uh, you need to hear. Uh, and uh, it'll take a minute for me to, um, actually I'm getting used to it, um, which is um, a sound, actually a sonification, which is der derived from uh, the, the comet itself emitting sounds. Um, and we put it online actually uh, at the night of the Rosetta landing and clearly our, at the time, very small, I guess it was a free account we had set up on, uh, on, uh, uh, on, on SoundCloud at that time. It basically exploded and you can see um, that uh, until today it has 6 million um, uh, plays and, and downloads. And that is what, what Hydrogen C used, which is actually sonification by um, an, a German artist who was actually contracted by the University of Braunschweig to create that sonification. Uh, so uh, hoping that my uh, computer audio will be shared, uh, I will play the sound now. Peter, could you quickly confirm whether it, it, it can be heard? Was that uh, were people able to to listen to that? Yeah, we could hear we could hear that. 
Okay. That was audible. It sounded great, at least for me. <laughs> That's good. Um, so um, I think I, I, I would just do it manually because next up, um, uh, sorry for not coordinating this with you, uh, Peter, uh, is actually uh, is actually you and your label, because what you did is uh, with a, a, a tiny little bit of participation of myself, uh, you and uh, the artist Francesco Novara, um, you put out uh, a full EP with actually that sound, which is, uh, I mean, not just noticeable, it's, it's, it's out, outstanding. Um, and Francesco, uh, Peter, your co-host, um, and me actually doing not much more than uh, clearing it from, from the ESA side, produced a full EP and we'll, we'll take a quick look and have a quick, very quick uh, lesson. All that is possible thanks to free artistic content. So basically, uh, what what Peter, um, as the producer, executive producer, um, hope um, that is is about right with regards to your role, Peter and Francesco did is they produced an EP which was entirely and I mean it by in the truest sense of the word entirely produced with that one comet sound. So actually, that you can't even recognize the original sound I just I just played um, and. Um, uh, that is just one of the projects on which Peter and me uh, collaborated. Uh, and I will now switch back uh, to uh, the presentation. I uh, hope you can, sorry. Um, and you can see Peter here in the picture where we recorded sounds from the ExoMars rover at, at Aztec. All these are free for your artistic use. Actually, I hope I didn't get much feedback on uh, the audience, but uh, actually I was hoping that I would, um, that basically there would be all disciplines, that there would be audio artists, uh, fine visual, handicraft arts, whatever. For all uh, of you, I will have some, some examples. And as I said, I can only, well, uh, touch the surface of, of what uh, ESA has to offer and uh, to discover for you. And I hope you allow me to start with music and audio because that is also uh, my field when I'm not working as an ESA communication uh, um, guy. Um, what you, as I said, I mean, you can, we have the example of uh, like a classic independent band using uh, the, the sound, uh, um, Peter and Francesco Novara using it for the Astron EP on Peter's label Estab uh, establishment records. Um, we did stuff with uh, Kraftwerk, for example. I'm not sure, actually, I have to keep an eye on uh, the time because I want for sure, I'm not sure uh, how many listeners and viewers we have, but we should reserve uh, some, uh, I believe, Peter, some 10 uh, minutes at least for a QA. and a do you think? Yeah, hey, you, you have plenty of time, so take your time. Uh, okay, uh, basically, uh, then let's take a quick look um, at, um, what we did with uh, um, with Kraftwerk at the time. Um, I yeah, I would simply hope that many people knew uh, this once uh, knew, knew this band as some of the pioneers of uh, of electronic music. Basically, what we did with that was already in my new job uh, with uh, ESA astronaut Alexander Gas. It, it is we did the first uh, electronic music 
life gem in space, uh, so to say. It was technically, uh, because I mean, technology is basic with the ISS communicating to uh, the grounds. Uh, and as challenging as it was, it was also quite, uh, quite simple. And something which basically transported the idea of space exploration and uh, that, well, basically very iconic uh, band that Kraftwerk is that basically transported that um, around uh, the world. We can take a very quick look uh, before, before, I would, uh, before I would move on. And I would. Uh, um, So uh, basically, um, that um, I received many emails after that, and people uh, uh, they would ask uh, whether that was for real and whether it was really live. And the thing is, uh, yes, uh, it was. Um, so many things are, are, are possible, uh, be they free and public or in the or in in the uh, in the public domain, or or be they as uh, it some sometimes seems maybe untouchable to work with Kraftwerk, but even that is uh, is possible. And that said, uh, a very important message I would like to pass on is uh, Isa loves to work with everybody. So uh, be you a, a very small and and yet unknown artist, or what you be like. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm not finding other words. Would you be uh, a giant like like Kraftwerk, who's around for four decades? It just doesn't uh, matter. Free uh, space um, and space assets, uh, they should be free for everybody uh, to use. There's a link which I leave unexplored for, for now. It is a very nice Tumblr uh, page, which has which compiles a lot of uh, the Rosetta uh, artworks uh, that were uh, that were made and with that um, I would uh, actually uh, like to uh, to move on to uh, which I uh, titled visual conceptual and handicraft uh, arts and there's um, a lot of examples uh, basically uh, Peter um, there's one more question I mean were, were you able to to contact um, uh, uh, Linden van Tol for for this uh, round of talks so will she will she join um, not not for this round of talks uh, but you know we, there's possibilities for the future of course okay that's cool so I, I was just trying to get an idea of uh, so you, of, yeah you should you should feel free to introduce uh, introduce her work absolutely um, okay, so uh, and in order to not jump uh, in between the two uh, apps on my computer because of that uh, um, Zoom glitch here, um, I um, will rather share once and, and then browse uh, through um, a dedicated website which we have on arts and culture um, in space, just providing you with a couple more, um, uh, more examples. Uh, and um, basically hand picking them. The first example is a, is a pretty uh, um, current one. Uh, here's something exciting uh, from uh, uh, the Dutch artist, and I'm really not good at spelling uh, um, Dutch names, Thijs Biersteker. Uh, and his, um, um, yeah, his project or basically the uh, the name of uh, his home is Bo Bowen Stu Studios. Um, and that's on show or was basically in, in, in Dublin. So again, a European project. And, and what Thais uh, uh, does is uh, it's moving lenses that bend light just as large concentrations of dark matter do. And I will enlarge one of them so you can actually see uh, what that looks like. Um, and there's also, uh, I would like to give you, um, uh, I would write a, a short glimpse in the correspondence. <laughs> Um, you could see 
uh, by the interest group and that ESA is actually open to collaborate with any kind of institution you might be involved with uh, or just also with, with individuals. In that case, it was with the University of Leiden and other partners. Um, this is the installation, as far as I understand, it's still in an early uh, stage, but um, I would say that I am quite firm and knowledgeable in musical arts, but not so much in installations. Uh, but um, uh, so I'm, actually, I wouldn't be even sure of how you would exactly call that art form, maybe installation uh, art. Um, example one. Let me move on uh, to. Uh, oh, and, and wait. Yes, please. For a moment. Yes, please. As we discover, as I discovered during our, our uh, with our participants, so Zoom doesn't really mix audio between computer audio and your narration properly. Okay. So anytime audio is playing on the screen, you're basically inaudible. <laughs> we okay. can hear that you're speaking, but we can't, we can't make up what you're saying. So you just have to pause the audio and then speak and then, yeah. Thank you, Peter. That's, that's really helpful. So, and it's also I'm glad that you have made already some experience with with these with these issues. It's, it's quite new for me. So, um, okay, what's about what what I, I actually uh, I was pretty much crap what I said. So it was good. It was not. Maybe it's fine. We. Yeah. <laughs> I was guessing. <laughs> now, what I what I did is I was guessing about the the art form, and I just said it is likely an art installation. Um, right. Uh, I, what I also said, it, it is in an early stage, so it's to be further uh, developed, uh, but that is something you can see that um, artistic collaborations, where well, ESA is a large and ESA is a diverse organization. So, so from, from mainstream, uh, I think that is a collaboration with Warner Brothers, uh, Sean the Sheep. I think the production company, company I, mean, is, I mean, it's long ago since they did uh, their very first movie. So Artmen are quite big in the business, I, say, I would say. Whereas Proxima, um, uh, for, um, uh, for example, starring Eva Green, is a rather smaller independent film production. Uh, so a French German collaboration. Um, there is basically everything, and you could, yeah, from big beats to smaller, very, very independent stuff like, like the projects uh, that Peter and me uh, did uh, together. But as within my presentation, we already um, um, made it to the point where I was talking, where I started talking about uh, visual um, arts um, uh, or handicraft or, or um, performance arts, uh, here are a couple more examples and they go from um, 3D or what is called lunar 3D printing for lunar habitats uh, uh, and people who engaged in, in a contest that, that ESA did with them. So there is multiple ways to engage with either uh, with content from ESA by reusing it or by developing, in, hopefully inspired by what ESA does. Um, uh, um, from scratch, so creating content, artistic content from uh, scratch. In this case, Ellie Cathedral, um, who developed interiors and interior design uh, for uh, future lunar habitats. And you might have heard, if you follow space and if you uh, follow, actually, Either Ross Cosmos, Ragozin is the head of Cosmos, or his his counterpart Jan Werner from from ESA. You would hear them often talk about joint lunar missions. You would often hear them talks about lunar habitats and building villages or a village at least uh, on the moon. And again, um, that is uh, what I consider a, a privilege and an advantage that ESA. Uh, um, collaborates very, very closely with, uh, with Roscosmos. Um, so the lunar exploration um, is, another, uh, is another form uh, of that. Here it goes where I'm, you can see my mouse pointer, hopefully um, it goes to street art and, uh, and, and graffiti and it uh, does not uh, really end uh, with kids art. So where you have uh, ESA's um, soon to be launched exoplanets uh, satellite um, uh, where kids were invited to uh, put their mini drawings uh, on uh, the satellite. 
actually they are very tiny that's uh, quite obvious um good uh let me see if i uh oh, graffiti once again uh, uh graffiti uh street art um we have super steady is <laughs> quite obviously <laughs> so there's a lot of stacky stuff you will find um the link um in my presentation um and i will sh share powerpoint again all right um Euphel Linden van Tol's uh, project uh, was called Starstone, uh, and it's something else I would like to refer to, which is uh, we have uh, actually, I have to say, we used to have an artist in residency program of which uh, in which she took part. So she had the chance to work um, for a couple of months uh, in what I would consider, Peter and me, we, we, we had we shared time and projects there as well, which is Aztec in the Netherlands. Uh, so people, actually international people can, uh, artists, uh, they, they, they could apply for uh, uh, um, artist in, uh, in residency ship <laughs> over there. She did that uh, and a couple of others um, where that was in cooperation with Ars Electronica in Linz in Austria. Unfortunately, uh, it has not been renewed in recent, uh, in the recent one, two years, I believe. And of course, COVID-19 doesn't make uh, it easier. When, actually, I will share the presentation with Natalia and, and, and Peter, uh, so they can make it available to you, or I will just put it uh, in, um, uh, in my Dropbox, so it would just stay there for uh, for you to download. Space Waste Lab uh, was a very interesting project which uh, makes use of space uh, debris and at the same time develops ideas on how to deal with that a problem of which all larger space agencies worldwide are well aware. This, the data, uh, sorry, the, the links um, to the sites we just explored together, you will find them um, here and uh, there's also an archive link uh, which has uh, tons of, of interesting uh, projects. Um, that looks like a boring data web page. Allow me uh, to have a quick pause. Um, so what is um, the Copernicus Open Access Hub? Basically it is uh, I don't know, petabytes, uh, uh, many, many <laughs> bytes, super many bytes of data, Earth observation data. And they can, uh, actually that's just one, and maybe the most important satellites uh, that um, dumps this data to, 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 to Earth, uh, terabytes if not more, every day, every hour actually, in super high bandwidth. Uh, and it's the most important because it's a high-risk imaging uh, satellite. The interesting story here is it is an ESA EU, EU project. So ESA and the European Union, they actually, as you might have noticed already, they are not the same. Uh, basically, um, ESA develops a lot of projects uh, for um, the European Union and the Copernicus Sentinel, uh, Sentinel fleet of satellites is one very large one uh, of them. And the EU thankfully decided, even strategically decided from moment one, to uh, put all the data uh, under an open license. Basically, it's free for everybody to use. And it does not even have um, that little issue which I mentioned with ESA data and in particular imagery and, and video of, of ESA at the beginning. And it's not a copyleft license, it's just free to use. Of course, there is the idea of um, really um, uh, enabling uh, smaller uh, uh, and medium enterprises and business, as well as artists, as well as the education sector to do uh, whatever they want with, uh, with uh, the data and benefit from it in the truest sense of the word, because also climate data, for example, is, is, is involved and not just uh, imagery. Um, these actually, these are PR images that are processed uh, by, uh, by ESA. So processed data by ESA. What we see here is uh, a plankton bloom in the Barents uh, Sea. And it looks like uh, a painting. Uh, same here. This is very, very uh, current. I think it's just a 
a few days or, 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 or weeks old. Uh, that is the, it's called the Flinders uh, region in Australia, actually is Australia. So while these already look uh, um, like artistic works, uh, of course you can do the same with the data and just grab it um, uh, here um, on that web page. Um, the thing is, uh, and I, I actually I have to mention what the obstacle is. The obstacle is um, yet that you really need uh, to dig deep into processing uh, of data. Of course, there, there's such thing as data arts, uh, and some people may may already have the skills or knowledge. But I know some who actually. Um, gained uh, these uh, these skills. I mean, you have to be um, uh, firm in technical jargon. You have to download actually all the. Uh, it's basically like consider you are a musician. You buy a very complex uh, synthesizer or a modular uh, synthesizer, and you have to uh, dig deep into the technology. And in that case, it's mostly software related because you need that to actually paint such beautiful uh, images. Again, they, they look like paintings, but in most cases they show either sea surface, land surfaces, uh, um, weather, climate, whatever, and they can be turned into useful um, uh, imagery to better understand uh, the complex subjects that they, um, that they entail or they can, can be turned into um, artwork. Basically every Hubble image, so, so the one we see here is, is a piece uh, of artwork. And you can see um, that ESA and NASA who operate the Hubble telescope uh, two together, uh, same will be the case with the future James Webb uh, and telescope, uh, they are all put under open uh, licenses and thus they are open uh, access. Here are uh, some, and this is actually, I think, should uh, hopefully you'd be interested in, in what I um, have um, referred to uh, so far. Here you see the first links to all these resources. Ready, first one, ready processed imagery, uh, photographic, data visualizations, uh, and so on. But um, I have to, as I was just talking about uh, um, data processing, in particular imagery data processing, uh, and actually how um, are Hubble images like this one, how are they made? I have to refer to that face, uh, first one. So click it, we share um, the screen again. Um, okay, that seems to work. So basically what you can see here is pretty much the same uh, as the Copernicus Sentinel data hub. Uh, behind this relatively simple and a bit old schoolish user interface lies all the Hubble data. And it's, it's there for you um, to explore if you wish, if you dare, I have to say. The thing is, um, uh, it is, and that actually I forgot to mention, it is only free after what we in scientific organizations or institutions call a proprietary period. Proprietary period means that the, uh, the principal investigators, so that means the, the scientist, the, the chief scientist and his team, uh, he, uh, he, has, uh, um, he has always, uh, or she in particular, uh, always has the privilege to use this data for a certain um, amount of time for himself, actually to, to reap the fruits, to benefit his, his uh, very, very exhaustive um, and, and cumbersome scientific uh, work. And this uh, a period uh, um, could be six months, it could be 12, in rare cases or also 24 months, uh, but after that it is free and it will always be free because it's uh, um, in uh, the majority of all cases, it is uh, publicly funded, so by taxpayers' money, be they from ESA member states, uh, be they from US American member states, in the case of the joint uh, ESA NASA Hubble mission, or uh, I will come to, to ExoMars again in, in, a minute, uh, in a minute, which is a joint ESA Roscosmos uh, um, mission. Uh, usually all of that is, is free. Um, 
I will open uh, the next link. Um, basically, again, quite old school -y, um, user interface. That's everything. Uh, so that is the ESA, ESAC, that's our establishment in Spain. Uh, actually, in the green uh, woods um, outside of Madrid, um, that has all the, uh, the data for all the missions. Again, what is here is free, and it's only there after scientists have reaped the fruits, have done their scientific work, and then it's there for everybody to use. So in particular, should there be students from natural sciences, space sciences, etc., among you, um, here you will find uh, everything, but you need, if you shouldn't, you have them yet, because they actually study that kind of subject, um, you um, have to train yourself, gain the skills, uh, use the tools, also, also the tools for, for processing, they are all free and to be found on this side, but you need time, dedication, and of course, last not least, least uh, creativity. Um, then again, uh, I'd like to refer for a moment to our joint, uh, currently, uh, besides uh, hoping I'm getting the mission name right, uh, Luna 27, so we do a couple of, of, uh, of Luna missions, future missions, together with Roscosmos and ExoMars is, is one of them. And that is our little baby, which in difference to um, uh, uh, NASA's uh, Perseverance, I'm not sure if I'm good in, in spelling uh, that name, uh, which is on its way uh, to Mars, we missed the 2020 uh, launch window. Uh, but uh, we'll send this rover with a powerful proton rocket to Mars with the help of Roscosmos. Uh, ESA will send that rover uh, to Mars in 2022. Who cares about two years, right? Um, again, why I'm referring to it? Because beautiful imagery uh, of the orbiter, the uh, um, uh, trace car gas orbiter, they are already uh, there. Again, this is a mix of, this is science uh, uh, images turned into uh, PR images. So you see that we are quite good at documenting stuff. So we basically put everything we receive on a daily basis with a large team of editors, we put it online. And um, so you should be aware um, that um, while I'm raving about open uh, uh, access, open and free access to all kinds of multimedia material and data, we have barely arrived maybe at 20% or so. And uh, so in, in context um, or in relation to the overall amount of data and image, imagery we, we, we put out and uh, you may ask, um, why is that? It's because simply we do not own the rights to all the materials because sometimes they are shared. Uh, with other uh, agencies. And then um, with NASA, we have found an agreement uh, with Roscosmos, uh, not yet, uh, uh, but um, basically Roscosmos is, is very uh, caring about sharing um, um, as well. I'm, by the way, love following them on their YouTube channel. I know you, Peter, you do too. Uh, so, so that's good, but um, we're working on releasing more content. But uh, Cassis, for example, the imager on the ExoMars rover, which also was brought to Mars with the help of a Russian proton uh, rocket, uh, that is all uh, under. We share the copyrights here with Roscosmos uh, and the Cassis uh, team of, of the PI under said license. Again, open, very open uh, to questions. Uh, again, uh, there was another link. Uh, which one was that? No, that was fine. Okay, let me quickly um, move back to the PowerPoint presentation and see what else comes up. More mass images. Um, and that's quite good because this is basically the end. This is an older mission. And again, this is data you could, I, I, earlier I showed you the Planetary Science Archive and also the Science Data Center uh, homepage, so to say, with all the links to all the different uh, data sets. This is all data turned into imageries, eyes on Mars, beautiful landscapes. 
more beautiful landscapes, 3D images, uh, because that is actually a 3D uh, camera, the HRSC uh, camera on the still ongoing Mars Express mission launched 2004. So um, basically, that was the main part of my presentation. And uh, I would love to answer some uh, questions of yours if you uh, have some. Again, I will share uh, this PowerPoint with you. It has the links to uh, ESA's main channel, and it has the links to my uh, channel uh, here below. You can just click them uh, and get in touch with me, either via email, uh, Twitter, or uh, even on Instagram, if you wish. And that's for the main part. If you have questions, I can always refer back to content or slides. And um, I thank you so uh, much. Uh, for the moment and hope we can chat a bit. Thanks so much, Marco, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so for anybody with questions, uh, probably if you're watching online, the easiest way to do that, if, if you're not in touch with me directly is to just uh, ask a comment in chat on YouTube and I'm monitoring there and, and can pass them along. I, I know we already had one question which is quite specific from inside our lab and uh, Chad asks if the if Copernicus images of the same area exist from different points in time and if they can be spatially registered. So basically the question is, do you have these images of Earth on Copernicus? Um, do you have more than one picture of a particular spot at different times and can you line those up? Definitely, and I would love if, if we have the time, uh, I would love to show, uh, to show an example. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, basically, got... it is on a on a slide that I that I probably ditched. Um, let me check if it's on 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 this one. Uh, this is actually um, just a moment. Um, in a second. So if I don't find it. Um, uh, in yeah, that's and actually, while while he's looking for everybody, uh, yeah, feel free to keep questions coming on YouTube. That also goes for our friends in uh, Moscow. I think that if you ask a question in Russian, uh, somebody will will be able to translate. We're watching. Um, okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so here's the visual answer to, to, to the questions. Um, that is actually, um, the, if I do not completely fail now, it's, 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 the, uh, it's the Portuguese island of Madeira. Uh, and you can clearly see how the satellite revisits and actually documents these devastating wildfires at the time in, 20, in 2016. So mm. uh, it's a definite yes as an answer. Uh, it can actually um, observe natural phenomena uh, and uh, or like our um, human-made phenomena, like the building of the the Bosporus uh, bridge that you can see here. So it definitely does. Again, I would like to stress that um, look. Um, well, I'm no pro. I'm no programmer. I'm no developer. But uh, I would uh, assess myself as. Uh, as relatively good in everything IT. And nevertheless, for me, it was a challenge to browse to quick looks uh, and, and, and then see where to find which uh, um, data asset. Uh, and, uh, but I mean, what I'm trying to say uh, or to stress again is you really need to invest uh, time, download the tools, again, all uh, open source software, everybody can, can do it. Um, and of course, uh, Laypersons can can use it, but um, it is uh, um, a matter of, of fact that quite often people that, that that this led people to specialize then and and even yeah either concentrate their art uh, on this or develop like a couple of young Austrian guys who were uh, trainees with uh, with ESA to just found their own company uh, um, and basically yeah. it's, it's something that I didn't. Uh, um, uh, include here, but uh, they did COVID visualizations uh, um, with, uh, with Copernicus Sentinel, Sentinel imagery uh, data. Uh, so related to um, how um, 
uh, actually air pollution in, in cities changed and, and stuff like that. So uh, a definite, definite strong uh, yes. Yeah, well, so actually really that's a perfect segue because the question from Catherine Sarah Young via YouTube, how can space art empower people to take care of planet Earth instead of escaping it? Escaping it is definitely not happening either. So, um, um, I yeah, it's a super question. Um, yeah. uh, but but very hard to answer. I think uh, uh, we're straight from my heart, straight off the top of my my head. It, I think it already does. Uh, mm. If you and I hope you will, um, if you download the presentation and then take your time and 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 take a look at all the. I, like there are dozens of examples which I didn't have uh, the, the time uh, to show, but some of the, the artistic work uh, which I, I'm referring to, it's so deeply touching. Hmm. Um, uh, be it uh, music uh, or, or visual uh, arts, and I hope that this, I mean, on that em empathic level, that this reaches uh, uh, people at, 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 at some point and, and makes them think. And what uh, you said, uh, so sorry, I didn't get the name of the uh, person. Ka Catherine. Catherine. So what what, yeah. what you said? Um, uh, yeah, it's it it's again. I I cannot agree uh, more uh, uh, to. Um, and there are people following other strategies, as you just mentioned, leaving the planet. I think we sh should hmm. stay. Um, and again, referring maybe to the famous Carl, Carl Sagan, it's, it's the only place we have. Uh, so make it. Let's make it a good place again, because the state is not really good just right now. And this is uh, actually, if if you um, engage in in inspiring and touching uh, space arts, uh, music wise, uh, visual arts uh, wise, I think there is a high probability that this reaches people on the empathy level and makes them rethink or reconsider certain behaviors. Some of some of your residents or um, other partners have have they used any of this data or imagery in specific ways to kind of uh, eliminate environmental issues? Um, I'm sure there's been a lot done with the data, right? I don't know if that's always taking the form of of art specifically. Mm, I have to say, uh, unfortunately, not not many, a, a couple, mm -hmm. and that again, and actually, I mean, you 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 heard me quite. Uh, uh, a couple of times, say, uh, or promoting this uh, today, uh, um, that uh, it needs some effort, but there is so many things uh, you, you can do with that. And it is uh, no magic, uh, that's for sure, but, but, but you need some, some time uh, and you need to have an affinity to uh, working uh, with, uh, with data and making it beautiful. I think the closest, right. uh, um, natural example would be, uh, I mean, you might all know um, uh, programmers, coders that engage in encode uh, aesthetics and writing beautiful uh, code. Uh, and, and this is what needs to be exploited because uh, it's, uh, it's zeros and ones or it's hexadecimal uh, stuff and it, it, it is turned into if it's not a photography like the one we, we see here, which has been taken by an astronaut, uh, but, but then it's data. But uh, I mean, there are obviously i mean it's as i said it's no it's no magic but maybe something worth uh, engaging with All right well one one really quick simple question um is there a place to download your your slide deck my slide deck means that powerpoint presentation yeah i guess people wanted the the links in it the couple of people yes. had asked um actually i can do that in 5 minutes okay so hold that thought. Stay, stay tuned. Anybody who's asking that question, it came. This came from uh, Du Dehur, who is also uh, an astrophysicist. Uh, and uh, um, so yeah, we'll also check out your stuff. Thanks to uh, Du Dehur. I don't know if I'm saying your name correctly because I'm only reading it, but hopefully that's close. Uh, also, a question from Luke Hooper: Do you think art? Do you think? I did read that right. Do you think art, space art? Do you think space art? serves as a good gateway for people to become more interested and learn more about the science side? Well, I mean, obviously that's a, that's a yes, no answer. I assume the answer is yes, but maybe this gets to the question that you're asking about um, people do need to make an effort to, to understand how the data is structured, how to access it. And I guess 
people will will have to dig into some of the science, right? Um, are, are there in, in any of the kind of artistic collaborations have, have people wound up um, digging uh, digging into some of the the science in unexpected ways? I know I did. Um, I'm not I'm not muted, right? Um, uh, you definitely did, uh, Peter. And um, again, I mean, I would like to stress that you don't need to be um, um, a rocket scientist. And 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 yes, uh, uh, there, there there were some uh, that is for sure. I don't have the examples in 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 that presentation, but I know uh, um, a couple of uh, of cases. And we even have, uh, I mean, uh, we have ESA employees who who do that in 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 their spare time. So mm. that's that's definitely uh, that's definitely possible. Yeah, I mean, it, um, it, I assume that even inside the agency, that where you do have rocket scientists, that people are really quite focused on a particular area of expertise. So does does engaging with communications, engaging with the public, and working with people like artists help bring to make some of those connections or bring together some of the specializations, even for people inside? the fields of uh, uh, space exploration and space science? I definitely think so. I th the many collaborations we, we we did, I mean, I showed you that ESA Arts and Culture page. And uh, the thing is that, I mean, I said it's, it's very diverse. So it ranges from, from mainstream, from uh, whatever big city beats to Kraftwerk to super tiny independent uh, um, artistic projects, be they, be they music or, or, or visual um, arts. And if you ask me, um, basically being uh, a musician hmm. myself, uh, of course, I mean, it's completely biased. I think, I personally think there is no, uh, no, uh, no better way. And again, I have to refer to uh, that, um, uh, to that emotional or, or empathy uh, level, which, uh, actually activates something different uh, in uh, people's um, perception. Uh, mm -hmm. So really, really different than the, the classic PR we bombard people with uh, every day. Um, that is maybe also one of the reasons why our Instagram channel is is the best performing one uh, because uh, the I think you got to know him once, uh, Peter, the the, the colleague, uh, my Spanish colleague running it. He manages exactly that. He just doesn't only post beautiful images or sounds or or videos. Uh, he's uh, an engaging person him, himself, but he manages manages to reach uh, that quite strong audience on exactly the the level I, I mentioned. So I think it's a huge. Uh, a set which by far we exploit too little at, at ESA. So basically, yeah. you, you can see that the web, our web page, we uh, actually we've we've watched it, uh, we we've seen it a couple of times uh, today. Uh, it uh, it is basically packed with images and, and and text, but that is just not enough. Hmm. It need, needs to get on that personal level, as just mentioned. Yeah. Um, we have a question. Another question. Uh, Helen Boyko asks: Are there have there been any projects related to dance and bodies in uh, anti gravity or microgravity? Uh, that's a good one. Which is difficult. We met some people, right? Didn't we meet some people who were who were doing a residency in this, uh, uh, doing these parabolic flights? Um, but well, I think that was was that I think it was Russia, not Europe, actually. Um, right. Do you remember? And yeah, I actually had the same um, uh, distant memory. It rings a bell. Um, they may have been something, but I will clearly uh, 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 need to do some some research. Um, for sure, there is. I mean, basically, with the overall space sector, they, they, I'm quite sure that that um, there were dance projects, maybe not with ESA, yeah. maybe with other space agencies. I would need to do uh, some research, but I think it's interesting and uh, it would be worthwhile investigating. Yeah, so that's something we can we can look into. Well, actually, for those of you, those of you who are tuning in from the public who are not members of our, our, uh, our summer school, um, in addition to what you're seeing in this public program, 
we have an international group of artists actually from all over the world. Of course, we have the advantage of they can come from anywhere. Nobody has to get on a plane. Um, and so part of what I, what I hope that we'll do uh, in this program is, is make some of those connections and, and, and dig into this. And um, so I'm co-host with uh, Natalia Fuchs, who is the uh, uh, curator uh, working, thanks so much to the Museum of uh, Cosmonautics um, for bringing all these people together. And, and um, you know, as we do that, we realize that we have tons of stuff to learn from each other and that maybe there hasn't been so much centralized kind of knowledge about uh, uh, different work that people are doing. So it's actually almost easy to forget because you kind of imagine that lots of people are doing lots of stuff, which is which is true. But uh, then we kind of dig in: Are we really talking to one another and aware of each other's works? Uh, I guess not always. There's a real opportunity to to be to be more self-aware. Um, if I said that right, uh, Marco. Absolutely. Actually, I had a question about that too uh, before we wrap up, which is. Um, of course, now space is opening up to lots of new entities, the governments who are involved who hadn't necessarily been involved before. Um, so multiple space agencies, not only the ISS partners, but uh, countries like China, um, more uh, private enterprise in space. Um, are, there, are there any counterparts that you can talk about uh, in terms of what, you, what you're doing at ESA with those other agencies or cooperation or communication? I know uh, some of your colleagues at NASA are also doing some cultural projects and have their own open access to data and open access to images? Um, you, counterparts, um, uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question. So, so in, in what sense counterparts uh, that would have... Um... You, you've, given, you've given us a good view of the ESA program. So I guess mm -hmm. it's a question of um, what other kind of related programs there may be or if, or if there's an absence with some of these uh, uh, new kind of space entities. Um, well, it's not about like promoting ESA now, but 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 I, I think um, ESA is, is currently the only space agency which at least has tried to set up and an, an, well some programs uh, for artists and also some um, related projects, so such as the artists in in in, in residency uh, program, which is now on hold, uh, the the cooperation with Ars Electronica, and the, that was also what we were uh, involved in, Peter, when we gave the, the talks in, in Russia in 2016. Um, it is popping up here and here and there with, with NASA, I believe also with, with Roscosmos, but of course for me there is a bit of the language barrier. I check their websites often, I, 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 I'm subscribed to the YouTube channel, but uh, I mean it's, there's little... Yeah. They're now experiencing that language barrier in reverse, so those of you, those of you uh, Russians who are sticking it out with us, thanks so much. Absolutely, and thanks. Uh, thank you for for allowing us to do that in, in in English, which is which is really helpful. I was even I found myself using. But actually, I traveled to Russia a couple of time, times uh, in these past years. Last uh, last time in January, so before COVID, and I love it. It was wonderful, and I definitely have to learn more about with regards to the language and the culture. But that said, with Roscosmos, I'm lacking contacts. Um, and with NASA, there is uh, quite some people I, I know, but, uh, but uh, I mean, there is nobody who's really dedicated um, uh, to artistic projects. It's, it's something which, uh, I mean, you actually, I think I recommended for uh, last year's Gamma, uh, I believe, I recommended my colleague Mark McCochran. Yeah, uh, who is the ESA senior scientific advisor, who's very dedicated uh, to, to, to that. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm counterparts like me and, and him, basically most of what I was referring to today is part of my past job. I still, uh, my heart is, is with it, but in, with my daily uh, work, I, I rarely find um, uh, the, the, the time to look into that again. And very often, and that is probably my best answer to that uh, question is it's project related. Um, mm. You can see that NASA, like ESA, uh, for a certain amount of time, like uh, me during my time in Paris, uh, there are some persons dedicated to a project, in my case, the Open Access um, uh, project, which, which had that important angle of, um, of the artistic reuse of, of, of the, the, the work. 
Um, but now that it was the same, and there was a colleague running that for for I think one two years, like, like me, and then basically they would be off to to new projects. So there is new co no uh, continuity, and that is actually uh, just one of the of the the, the drawbacks. What I would like to um, quickly refer to Peter, and then uh, closing from my side is. Um, I mean, everybody may uh, have her or his opinion on uh, uh, the commercialization of the, uh, the space sector. And um, uh, I would, you, you could actually witness um, like a couple of years ago where basically, I think it was on Twitter where Elon Musk was more or less uh, accused uh, of, of, uh, of um, putting his imagery in multimedia uh, assets under all rights reserved. And then and, and, uh, mm. it was just a couple of complaints on, on, on Twitter. And he said, oh yeah, cool, I understand. And then in a rush made everything like CC zero or, or buy or, or whatever. So one of the most open licenses. Um, and uh, this is because, I mean, these uh, private um, companies, I mean, they, they do not have as many boundaries like, uh, um, governmental organizations, be it NASA or even more complex intergovernmental um, uh, organizations like, like, like ESA. So there is some hope that that with, with them, there, there will be new uh, uh, opportunities because they are uh, probably, uh, they have uh, less uh, hurdles, internal hurdles to, to, to take, to, to make a more open um, uh, reuse of their materials uh, possible. And, but right. I mean, for the time being, as we know, with a successful landing uh, yesterday, it is mostly focused on human spaceflight, but, but who knows? Well, and we should say, and this isn't an entirely new problem, so certainly the SpaceX relationship is, is new or unprecedented for the United States in a number of ways, but at the same time, you've, we've, we've talked about uh, some of the challenges that you have to deal with dealing with not only multiple governmental partners, but also I mean, you still have private contractors and private contractors have been part of space flight uh, since the beginning, right? Um, so at least some of these hurdles are, are, even if they're taking a different form, they're not entirely novel, right? No, yeah, that's correct. Um, well, that's that, Peter, um, with regards to uh, the, uh, the PPT, um, I just put it in my Dropbox and shared the link uh, with you, uh, hoping okay. that you could share it with uh, our... <laughs> where, did, where did you share it with me? Uh, on your personal email. Oh, okay, so I will um, actually, just so is, if it's okay to post that on, should we post a Dropbox link on YouTube? <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, actually. Uh, maybe not, <laughs> but maybe do, we not. Have, uh, do we have a list of, of all the uh, viewers today? Actually, what I can do is I will post the, maybe I can post the links on that last frame to, uh, uh, for, for people in our lab, for, for people watching this video, since we're public on, on uh, YouTube, uh, I think I will paste into comments the, the, the critical links at the end, which is what I think you're looking for, not the whole presentation but just those links on that last page to-, to No, it's actually life. the whole presentation and I don't mind- uh, You don't um, mind. Uh, to, to share that. Um, okay. it's, it's, it's rather that maybe, I mean, what you just said that um, uh, sharing a, a link from my personal Dropbox is, is maybe no, no good idea. I'll right? find a way, you, YouTubers who may be listening to this on an, in the future, I hope the future is, 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 is great. Uh, I will post a link in comments so you can check comments on, on YouTube. Uh, and find it there. I think the chat should still be visible uh, for our group. I'll, I'll share it with you there. Uh, but Marco, thanks so much. This was a fantastic conversation. Thanks to everybody who asked a question, everybody watching. Um, big thanks to the Museum of Cosmonautics for, for hosting us virtually. And uh, yeah, thanks, Marco. Thank you for having me. And good evening, everybody. Bye-bye.